Welcome to lab eight on double slit interference. All right, we're gonna click on this simulation to run FETSIM HTML5 version of the wave interference lab. We look at the interference situation like this. I'm gonna turn on two light sources like that, it's like the laser pointer version. Yeah, so with the laser pointer version, this right button all the way on the right, I'm gonna check the screen box to add a projection screen. That's the thing that got added right here over to the right edge of our interference region. And then we're going to set the frequency slider to blue. So that's of course the frequency of the light and the color is indicated by the slider here. And we can turn on both light sources, see the waves that are being emitted from each light source. And we can observe this interference region. Well, we see waves happening these are constructively interfering. The blue is the peak of the wave, the crest of a wave, and the dark is the trough of a wave. And we notice those regions of destructive interference where there's no waving visible. There's some lines of destructive interference that are extending outward. And on the screen, you can see these bright regions are literally bright, bright blue in this case, and the destructive regions are dark. So you wanna first observe the effect of changing the wavelength on the interference pattern. So you can set it to green, and see how that pattern changes. Set it to red and see how that pattern changes. I'm gonna pause this because I don't wanna give away any of the answers. You have to check that out yourself. So I'm gonna set this to the middle of the red for part two. And you can use just one uh, single light source or turn on only one light source. So these power buttons let you turn one light source on or off. So I'm gonna leave it on only one light source running. And I'll let it fill up with waves. And then I'll pause the simulation and use the tape measure tool to measure the wavelength. So if I drag that out, show you a couple things. You can drag the end of the tape measure around or you can drag the whole thing around. So it can be useful to place the tape measure at the source of the light and then measure outward to whatever you wanna measure. So I can measure you know, one wavelength um, away from the light source, that'd be this. I can measure the separation between them or I could measure the distance to some point on this projection screen. All of those things we're gonna do. First, you wanna measure the wavelength. So I'll put this at one crest, like that, and then measure the distance to the next wavelength. Should get something in the order of 600 nanometers. That makes sense for a red wavelength. And we can turn on the second light and let the simulation run. We'll set the spacing of the lights to about 2100 nanometers. And of course, we could check that real quick and see that that agrees with that measurement. Again, I'm gonna leave this tape measure at the top light source. And the first thing that we wanna do for part three is to measure the distance to a place that is equidistant between the light sources and about three quarters of the way across your computer screen. So somewhere in this region. So I'm gonna measure to here. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the simulation. And then I wanna see to make sure that that's equidistant. To do that, I could actually flip this around and then measure here and see if I did all right. So 3,500 nanometers to the second source and pretty close, 3,489 to the first source. So you can tell that that, that point along the center is equidistant. And again, it's easy to do that by moving the tape measure to your interest of location and then checking the distance to each light source. So you'll use that trick as well to observe the measurements to different places on the screen. So if I wanted to know what was the distance to this first region of, const of destructive interference, if I wanted to know the distance to this region of destructive interference, I could put the tape measure there and then measure the path length from one light source and the path length from the other light source. So that's a, an easy way to make those measurements. So you can go ahead and repeat that type of measurement for all of the constructive and destructive regions you see. So this would be the central constructive region. This would be the first destructive. This would be the you know first constructive that's above the central. This would be another constructive region that's below the center of max, below the central maximum. This would be a region of destructive interference. Each of those, we would expect have a different path length difference. So again, the path length difference is the difference between the distance from one source 
and the distance from the other source. So I would, I would take these two measurements and subtract them. And we get to implement this in the lab using lasers and double slits. Here you can see the laser aligned with a double slit apparatus. These are labeled on the front. And we just shine it on the wall at the other end of your lab bench and we'll observe the diffraction pattern or interference pattern on the wall. We're really gonna focus on just the central region of dots. We'll learn why these other regions appear later. As you can see now, this pattern starts out small and expands as I move down towards the wall. That's why we'll make this measurement at the wall where it's the most accurate given the rulers that we have. One trick would be to mark this on a scratch paper, circle each bright spot or park dot in the middle of it, and then you can move it down to your lab bench and measure the actual spacing. 